It's a beautiful day to be you. You, the viewer, watching this right now. You know why? We're doing something amazing. We're setting records. We are going to make the longest AI telephone you've ever seen. We could keep going forever, but we gotta stop at some point, right? So it will, it will stop. I'm using Mid Journey for this, and here's the concept. I took a picture, in this case, a bunch of crap on the floor, and then I had Mid Journey describe it. And then I generated that description, and then I described that. We go and we go and we go and we go. We start with one thing, we end with with another. It's not about the destination. It's about the journey. Journey! If you're new to my channel, hello, I'm Green Skull. I do AI stuff. I'm an AI entertainer. AI to me is very fun. An AI telephone is very, very fun. Now, before we get into this, I'm gonna jump to the future for a word from our sponsor. Oh, hey, it's me from the future. I'm here to tell you that this video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora 12. Filmora 12 is video editing software, but it's so much more than that. Think of what you know about video editing tools, but now incorporate AI into it. It's the future. So right off the bat here, I can just click AI copywriting and look immediately can help me out with things like ideas and even video descriptions. Let's do video titles. 10 cutest turtle pictures you can't resist. You could even do an oral script. Hi, and welcome to our video about turtles. You can actually create AI images with Thin Filmora. Turtle. It's a good turtle. Giant tortoise. Hand-drawn style. <laughs> this is a brand new species here. And a baby turtle. Awesome. It's really easy to edit with this. You can search through a bunch of filters. Here we got AI portrait video effect. Human glitch. Check this out. Look at that. Do you know how much effort that would take? Now I'm burning and glitching out. The turtle's on fire. Look, even just an outline. AI generated music. You've got to check out Filmora 12 for yourself. Link is in my description. AI is the future. We're making it big, guys. we got sponsors now. Isn't that exciting? Be excited for me. I think it's exciting. Let's take it away, baby. Let's dive right into this thing. So as I mentioned before, I started with this image. I got a pizza blanket, a fish toy, ketchup, Batman holding a fish, another fish, a towel, a watch, and a comb. Let's see what AI thinks about it. Now, on the descriptions, you'll see a number. It's because I get four descriptions. My methodology is I want the image to evolve the most. So I'm not continuing the thing that is the most accurate. If anything, I'm picking the one that's the least accurate. I just want to see where it goes. People ask me that question a lot. It's like, why did you pick three? It's like, well, probably because it's the weirdest. A picture of a pizza with fish on it. Towel and a toothbrush. Superheroes, I, you know, it's not bad. You know, just a bunch of gibberish. I, kind of surprisingly close to the original image in concept at the very least. Just a bunch of stuff. But the one that spoke to me the most was this. Items on the table consisting of a fork, knife, fish, and some gloves in the style of superheroes. Really took into account this dark superhero vibe. You got almost a star up there and a mask and armor kind of. Very ominous. I like it. A dinner for two is set and includes a mask and forks. Dark green and dark gray. War photography made of wrought iron. I love this. The ominous continues. We have this mask on display here, but clearly in a dining setting. It's like you just entered a cult, right? Like put on the mask and eat. Silver tableware, ritualistic masks, medieval fantasy, Moses. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Like, the, uh, it's really looking at you, right? It's looking right through the image. Like, you're not coming out of this dinner alive. You are the dinner. An alien table set. Ah. Well, alien is right. It's a mix of gas masks and aliens. And what is that back up there? What is that thing? What is that creature? I hate that. I love this image. Like, it's haunting. What are they eating? I got so many questions. Alien heads at the wedding. Dystopian landscapes. National Geographic photo. I love when it says that. What? All right, here we go. Here are alien heads at a wedding. I love their goggles. I love their eyeballs. I love that this one's just shoving their hand into the, like, broccoli. A couple of aliens dressed as men and women at some type of event. I'm pretty pleased that we're heading down this alien hole. Phrasing. We got these wrinkly the aliens. The one on the left here kind of looks like what a frog looks like when it sees a fly. Just like nothing going on in there. Just really, you know, about to just nom some food. An alien having a fancy meal at a table. Yankee core. We've seen that. Romantic conception. Okay, well now we have a Yoda-esque figure. What's in his hand? What's, uh, what is that? Glass is like turning into, I don't even know what's going on there. So it also thought it was Yoda. A Yoda dining with a glass of wine infused with social commentary. I mean, 
you can't deny that this is fantastic. Like it's a really, really strong image. It's one of those ones where you struggle to identify what's wrong about it. Like even how the hand is resting on the plate is very, very well done. I guess I can say the fact that like the forks are backwards, right? Like they're to the viewer. I don't know, I'd dine with Yoda. I mean, a Yoda. Star Wars Yoda eating a plate of pasta. Okay. Goblin Academia. What is that? Like a learned goblin? Okay, sure enough, Yoda eating pasta. It's a pretty great image. It looks like he's only got, you know, one chopstick here. And then the other finger is just like this. And then the pasta is kind of just floating up. He is Yoda. So it's not <laughs> outside the realm. Star Wars Yoda bowl of pasta. It's just like shrunk it down. Same concept, but absinthe culture. Yeah, so now <laughs> so now Yoda's in the bowl of pasta. I'd be lying if I said it doesn't look kind of fun. Star Wars in an Olympic bowl for the Yoda statue. It's very odd. Goblin core. We love our little goblin Yoda. All right, so now we have a bowl with Yoda statues and roses. Very normal stuff. Star Wars figurine with roses decorating the edge. Now we got a Stormtrooper-esque character and roses. Kind of looks like they're made out of chocolate. Now I'm hungry. Star Wars trooper figurine in the shape of roses. Familiar domestic scenes. Very familiar. Now we have two stormtrooper lovebirds handing each other roses. Look how shy they are. They're so shy. A stormtrooper adorning another stormtrooper holding flowers. Historical reproduction. Remember when this happened? I like this. We have a stormtrooper giving a red stormtrooper white roses. It's a lot of fun. Isn't that fun? We're having fun. Stormtroopers giving away flowers to a wedding ceremony. Love and romance. This is awesome. I love the variety here. It all seems seems not that strange other than the like, what's that? What's this thing to the right of this character? What's this blob? Like, is that the bride? Like, what's going on there? Bit of a flip here. A portrait of a woman with flowers and a knight in white in the style of sci-fi realism. So we're keeping the rose thing here. You're gonna see that being a common theme for a while. So when I was generating these, honestly, I just wanted to get away from the roses. At some point I'm like, we've done roses too long. So there's gonna be a few runs going here where I'm just like, we gotta get out of this hole. The painting features two people in armor standing next to some flowers. Zucker punk. Well, we got one person in armor. Again, we're stuck on this theme of flowers and like a knight and a princess kind of thing going on. The knight meets his bride, floral surrealism. Here we go, we have this very romantic image. A man in armor, obliviously kissing a woman outside roses, obliviously. I clicked it just because I wanted to see oblivious, but uh, you know, is this oblivious? I don't see anything oblivious about this, unfortunately. It makes me kind of sad, to be honest. I want to see someone going, oh? Uh? Oh, oh, like that one alien. We love that alien. A Steve. A king and a knight dressed in armor, hugging. Sandal punk. So again, we're in this hole. It got too influenced by those images. It's two knight and a princess. It just can't get away from it. Knights and wizards. Now we're talking. So check this out. It's kind of funny. It just made two separate images, right? It's like, don't even, we're not even gonna bother. Here are two pictures. Here's a knight looking like Aquaman and uh, a wizard. A painting of two mages. I mean, at least that's accurate. We got two mages here. Kind of a cool style to this, very paint dobby. Two witches are holding fire spells. Marvel Comics, PS1 graphics. Now you'll notice here, interestingly, for some reason, it described these as having dash dash AR, which means aspect ratio of 91 by 51, despite me always feeding and setting it to 16 by nine, which is typical widescreen. I don't know why it decided to make it slightly, slightly different, but every time I regenerate it, that is the one thing I changed is I kept making it 16 by nine. And it just kept going back to 91 by 51. If anyone was curious, kind of weird. So here we go, we have our two witches holding fire spells. I do like the blue and orange thing we got going here. Always nice colors to have. Two witches holding a candle, standing with one in the air. D&D. We're gonna need a young witch and an old witch. Two witches in dark robes holding candles. Patience of a saint. Like as though that's a visual, you know what I mean? They are looking a little darker here. You gotta give them credit for that. We are keeping this very cool paint style. This is a portrait of two witches holding candles on both sides. Cry engine. Now we're leaning more towards like Pirates of the Caribbean territory. I dig it. Well, we've had too many witches holding candles now. We gotta get out of here. Two women holding candles in dark space. Xbox 360 graphics. Where does it come up with this stuff? Like it's weird that it puts that in there because it's still just like a painting style, you know? But I'm excited that only one has a candle and one is just doing this, whatever whatever that's about. Two women with lanterns holding up lights. ZBrush. Whirring contrivances. What? We're just stuck here. It is quite fascinating that there are some things that AI nails every time, right? One of which is, is women. Generally speaking, I've found, at least anecdotally, 
Once you start getting women generated in an AI like Midjourney, that stays. It's really hard to get away from that to get to whether it's you know a robot or an object, right? Like you just women. And apparently what we've also learned are things like candles and lanterns. It is genuinely quite fascinating to me, the things that stick and it just gets it. It can visually understand it. Golden Genie's poster art concept art. Yes, hello, welcome to the redundant department of redundancies. I am pleased now though, because one doesn't have anything in their hand and the other, just an orb. It kind of looks like the moon, right? doesn't it? It's like a glowing moon, but that's good. We're getting away from it. Female characters holding gold and looking in each other's eyes. We're free. We're free from the candles. Pretty interesting thing happened here though. The cut right down the middle. Neat stuff. Two women standing before a golden window. Mirrored realm. These look like sisters to me, but we're totally free. They're just standing in front of windows. A painting with a young woman in front of a window. Caravagism. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Okay, whew. We have a single person now. This excites me. We're making progress. Things are changing. And now it's getting a little more modern. A drawing of a blue dress with a woman sitting by the window. I mean, this one's just straight up class. This is straight up art right here. You know what I'm saying? This is great. Really, really cool. Big, big fan of this image. Blue dress with a window overlooking the water. Lively seascapes. Boom. We have a woman opening her balcony door, looking out into the ocean. Quite different. And now we know we're gonna get some new stuff. Blue dress out the window. Realistic, yet romantic. I guess so rom romantic doesn't isn't real, you know? And now we just have a floating dress, right? It's like a dress on a stand, but like, what's holding that up? Is a ghost holding that up? It could be. That could be a ghost. Spooky. Press one if spooked. A blue dress hangs on a bed near the sea in the style of optical illusion paintings. Windows Vista. Once again, with a floating blue robe. Why? Very, very strange imagery. Like mildly haunting, you know? Oh, it's like a beautiful image, but then you're like, wait, how does that work though? The drape of the robe is blue. All right. Hey, at least I can make the argument that that's hanging on something this time, you know? There's, there, there's hanging. There is. This actually looks great. I really want to sit out there. A blue window is reflected in a mirrored door. So Polarizing master. All right, so now we're way different. Well, it's kind of funny because one's like a double door and then the other one, it's like too small. It's kind of unsettling. We're starting to dip our toes into liminal space territory. Like what's with the ground? Why is it wet and kind of broken and it's kind of dingy, right? Like it's, there's something unsettling about this image to me. Bjorn Hildebrandt's new album, Deserted Door. I looked up Bjorn Hildebrandt, it's not a person. I mean, like there are people with that name, but like, isn't it weird that it does that? Like it picks random names and is like, oh, this artist, this musician, not a real person. And lastly, this door. This I find very eerie. We're starting to get into horror territory. Like why is it in the water? Why is the wall falling apart with like almost, you know, like lava-y, rust-y. It might be like blood, you know? Like it's kind of creepy. Is it smoke or rock? It's like Silent Hill kind of vibe, but this door is like, I don't know, it seems kind of serene out there. You just gotta get through the door. You can analyze this, you know? This is some, you write an essay on this lad. We started with fish and towels and crap and ended up at the spooky doorway. I find this kind of journey to be so fun and fascinating. You never know what you're gonna get. And I highly recommend other people try this themselves. It's just, it's just really fun to me. And you get such interesting, unexpected results. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, make sure notifications are on. As my grandpa always said, when a door opens in the ocean, go through it before it closes. Later.